Hey guys, it's good to be with y'all this nice rainy Wednesday morning here in Eastern Kentucky. I'm, I'm host with Appalachia Fusion. And as far as this show and our cooking show, something dear to my heart, as you all know from our past episode, is hunting, fishing, and trying to help people. And um, I got Mr. Roger LaPointe with me today that's president of Hunters for the Hungry. And I'm going to kindly talk to y'all about what we have going on in Morgan County, West Liberty, Kentucky overall. And a, f a few things is, number one, we have a local processor here, Appalachia Meats, that's up um, 172 Crockett, Kentucky. Most of y'all know them, have used them in this area. And they're actually a deer processor that processes for hunters for the hungry. And this makes the second year here in Morgan County that we've actually been able to do this project. And this will be going on the second year. And what this enables us to do, and we'll get more in depth with this and Roger in a little bit, is we're able to have hunters commit a deer or take a deer to appropriate legal processor that we can use through, that, or through Hunters for the Hungry. They process the deer and ground burger. They take it to our local food bank, which in return we've had some people donate freezers. We can store it there and give it to people throughout this Appalachia area through the pantry as needed. And and that's you know and that's what we're doing here in Morgan County. Now as we get in depth here with Roger in a little bit and we talk to him more about the program and what's going on. Um, we ask for your help, number one out there, when you see this, through my TV program and y'all watch us cook here and everything. We're going to really promote this. We're going to bring the fish and wildlife crew in that has a program from field to plate that has some great recipes and ideas that some of you guys or anyone that may be in need of the meat get it. You don't know how to cook wild game. They have some great recipes. Um, gives you some different varieties of stuff you can do with it because that's a great natural resource that we have here in eastern Kentucky is wild game. As you see throughout the show, you know, we do all kinds of stuff with it and we need to use that resource. And um, so that's kind of our intro here for you guys out here. And as we go and talk about this, we'll have the info at the end of the show and we'll try to put it on our... Um, especially this will be on our YouTube channel, but also it'll be on our show, Appalachia Fusion, that we're gonna do a cooking show with Roger here after a while. We'll have this Hunters for the Hungry info and stuff like that for you guys to get a hold of later. Roger, thanks for joining us. Um, appreciate you being here today. Well, thank you, Larry. I really appreciate coming up to this part of the country. Uh, uh, Eastern Kentucky is near and dear to my heart. I've got friends that live in, in Jackson and uh, uh, I've always, always enjoyed coming up here. In fact, I, I got picked back in 2008 for a, a, an elk tag cow and was able to harvest an elk here. Uh, that was before I was with Hunters for the Hungry and just I just fell in love with this part of the country and the people. So uh, anything I can do to help here, I, I enjoyed it. Uh, one of the things, uh, talk a little bit about Hunters for the Hungry first. Uh, Hunters for the Hungry is a standalone charity. It's a 501c3, and it's completely run by sportsmen, and it's all volunteer. There's no paid staff. We have about 14 directors, uh, some regional directors that are spread out throughout the state that uh, uh, Western Kentucky and uh, uh, South Central and uh, North Central, where they're able to be embedded in the community. And one of the things that we really like to do is like what you're doing here with Appalachian Meats is all the meat that's harvested in this area goes to the community. Uh, now that said in western Kentucky where they're blessed with a lot more deer we now have three refrigerated trailers where we're actually uh, transporting deer from western Kentucky to the harder places sure. in here in eastern Kentucky. Uh, last year was our first foray into that because we've, we were just received uh, uh, the Con Honorable Order of Kentucky Colonels gift has gifted us one trailer last year and they actually gifted us one for this year too because well the program was going so well and so we were able to go to four different uh, 
food banks here in Appalachia, uh, Cranks Creek in Harlan County, uh, and we have uh, one in, I believe, Prestonsburg that was just started, and uh, there's two others. Uh, their names escape me right now, but uh, we were just overwhelmed with the generosity to, from the people in Western Kentucky, and actually a uh, a church in, in, in Louisville, where we're headquartered at, helped us get uh, non-perishable items, so not only meat, but we were able to bring in uh, pastas, soups, vegetables, all kinds of things. So we had, we came up here four times with four full trailers with loads of things. So it was it was a great experience and really enjoyed doing this. And that's great. I mean, I didn't, I'll be honest with you, um, I didn't know nothing about Hunters for the Hungry to about two years ago. I mean, like, no, no, I've heard about them, this and that. And then whenever I got, you know, reading into it and through some mutual friends actually talking about it, and I think they've helped you also. And I'm like, man, we this could be such an awesome opportunity for Morgan County, Kentucky. We have Cross Pantry up here that feeds hundreds of people a year. Another pantry getting started in Wolf County, which those that's local here knows um, Nikki Stacy and them did an outstanding job with that. I think we're going to, through mutual friends and clubs, going to try to help both of them. And we'll be working with Nikki this year. For yeah, the first that's, year the that's great. So, so. And I mean, she has hard to go to. And, and and this is a real deal, too. I mean, everybody's hearts. And you take the sportsmen, your guys, volunteer. I mean, it, it's a passion to just help people and help you know, not just Eastern Kentucky, but all of Kentucky, because you all serve the whole state, oh, correct? We've got a, a network of 53 processors spread out uh, the Commonwealth, and we serve over uh, 160 different food pantries, either be part of the Feeding Kentucky network or local uh, uh, church-driven uh, pantries or just regular food banks throughout uh, the Commonwealth. So we're pretty well spread out, and uh, I think last year we did over 1,800 deer. The year before that, we were at 2014, which was a record deer. And we get about 40 pounds of deer, uh, 40 pounds of meat per deer. So do the math. That's a, and that's a lot of that's, burger. That's a lot of burger. Yeah. And so uh, our processors grind it into one to two pound packages, and then it's distributed out to the food banks. And one of the reasons we do uh, the grind is because one, it's easier on the processors to do it, store it, and then, and it's easier for the people who actually recipients of the meat. Everyone knows what to do with burger. If they there get a, a chop or a roast, it's like, the, the, the excuse the phrase, the deer in the headlights. Look, what? How do I fix this? But burger, you know, chili well, stoops, stoops, yes. you know. And it goes with all the food pantry items there. Yeah, like exactly. they get a lot of hamburger helpers, pasta and stuff. That hey, I got this. Pound, two pounds of deer burger, got a box of ham, hamburger helper. You know, it's quick, easy, it's good, Perfect. it goes together. Mm -hmm. And like you said, people ain't like, well, I, I don't want burger, I want the loin, or, you know, everybody gets the same. Right. And, and, and it's good. It's just, um, you know, who don't like free burger? Because you go to the store and buy hamburger now, it's four or five dollars a pound if you, I mean, if you're lucky, if you right. get it for that. So it's just such a great need. And, um, one thing I noticed last year here in East Kentucky, you know, a lot of people that hunts, they still, you know, they like their deer. I like my deer. When I kill one, I like putting it in the freezer. Um, I donated one last year and kept one. But with the process you all have now or with the luxury of having the food truck or the freezer trucks or refrigerator trucks, I mean, the places that has a bigger population of deer, you all can y'all can ship meat up here and really help us more in East Kentucky. That's that's correct. And it, you know, the, the best thing for the hunter, it extends our season. Now you just, just don't go out there and get that one deer. Now you can go out and get it, extend your season, get a couple more and donate. Yeah. And, it, it's, and it's all, you know, all goes to a good cause. It not only is. helps the food ban pantries, but it helps the farmers too. It helps Especially farmers. the row croppers and, uh, 
And yeah, especially in areas where the deer population is great. I mean, you know, here we've been affected by some stuff in, well, the whole state of Kentucky is affected by an extent, but Eastern Kentucky a little more than others. Yeah. And and we may not hardly have the deer we had a few years ago. I do think it is coming back locally around my area, but you know, that still gives you guys the ability to bring stuff from Western Kentucky to help us out when we can't, when right. we can't provide like we'd like to for our right. hunters to give the pantries. And it's and it's all about working together. We spoke about that earlier, right. you know, us, us joining it's, together. It's all sports and working and, together. Correct. And work to, to help people because, um, you know, Appalachia is dear to my heart. I was, I don't know why I was getting looks emotional, but you know, I, I love East Kentucky. Um, I love the people here and anything that we can do to help and have a desire to help people, you know, that's that's what life should be about. Oh, yeah. And um, sportsmen sometimes get a bad rap yeah. just from wanting to kill just for the horns or do this or that. And, um, you know, it's not all about that sportsman. You know, we bind together. We want to help. We want to help fight the hungry, and this is one way that we can do it. This is one way that we can right. help communities. And out. Commissioner Quarles with the Department of Agriculture has been a great sent a godsend for us with his hunger initiative that he started. So it's really shined a light on what uh, the state of hunger in Kentucky, because you know one out of five children go to bed hungry in Kentucky, and that's not right. It's not. And we've got all these wonderful resources, be it farmer's markets, be it excess vegetables, or be it deer that we can utilize. And he's bringing all that together so we can we can make it happen. I was overwhelmed with excitement when I, because at the same time I kind of got in depth of how great of organization you guys was. Also found out that, and I, and I honestly don't know how many years Fish and Wildlife have been doing, if it's one year, two years, or three when I found out. But from the field to plate programs and stuff like that, the recipes they have, and I don't know if you all have worked together or not. I think you all have, have Yeah, you? with their Cook Wild program. Cook Wild program, Yeah, yes. we uh, actually worked with them and uh, actually gave them deer to use to uh, develop it in Asian carp. Yeah. Trying that yes, too. Yes, I forgot so, about that. So we're try, trying to utilize that if we can, trying to find a way to make it economical for the food banks to get. Yeah. But uh, yeah, they've been great as far as, but not only deer recipes. They, all the, those young ladies, they've they've uh, frog anything from frog legs to squirrel, I've seen to rabbit, turkey, squirrel, rabbit, everything. They, and um, they they cook it all. Yeah, and we'll go on death and then on another show sometime. But I just wanted to bring it up because when. When we did that, we was doing a, when I found out about Kentucky Hunters for the Hungry and that I went to an extension office because they're great to work with us, let's, let's do this. We kind of, a team of us, group of us come together, got a pantry, got some donations, get extra freezer cause, and we'll talk about donations in a minute because we need them. But anyhow, we got an extra freezer so they could store the meat and then we did like a um, dill whittle, whittle. Dill whittle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he come up and did like a big scoring thing and we had gift prizes, did like a three night thing before COVID come around. And um, we made some of the recipes using some ground deer burger that we had. And um, we was gonna intertwine that at that time with your all's program, do a big ordeal. Then COVID hit, but COVID didn't stop the process. It may have stopped the telecommunication part of it or the IT part of it, but I mean, Hunters for the Hungry is still going strong. They had those trucks. They could still deliver. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it, it didn't shut it down. It gave us an opportunity for more sportsmen to be out in the field to hunt, to get away from everything, kill more deer, get them processed, take them, unload them, feed families. And so, I mean, it's just how you guys and fish wildlife and sportsmen's working together for this program is just great. I mean, and uh, right. you actually, you want to explain your house pamphlet? Yeah, we actually, speaking of working together, we worked with Fish and Wildlife to develop this trifold pan, uh, pamphlet that's a, kind of a quick synopsis of uh, deer hunting regulations. And uh, on the inside, it shows the deer hunting zones, some of the rules. But what I'm most excited about is on the back, is our ad for uh, Kentucky Hunters for the Hungry, and it has a QR code where you 
hit that code and you can find a processor that's uh, close to you. Again, it's 53, 53 processors spread out throughout the Commonwealth. And if anyone knows of any other processors that would like to be part of our network, just contact us and uh, we'll talk to them and see if we can get them on board. So, uh, but I'm leaving Larry some of the pamphlets for him to hand out and sure. uh, you, can, you can actually download it off Fish and Wildlife's website or uh, it'll be at any of the licensed branches. Uh, yeah, I've actually, so. I'm gonna feel bad because I can pick them up and look at them. I've seen them at several stores around here already. Yeah, they spread they, out. They, yeah, they so spread that's, out that's really cool. And the Fish and Wildlife They're, Foundation also went in. On actually, the, believe it or not, Dad has one laying on his table of house, and I seen it last night, and I, did, I didn't know to now, but it's cool. Oh, that's so, neat, so. so let's get into the guts of project, no pun intended. Um, you know, how can you guys out there help us? I'm going to tell you how you can help us. Right now, we got two sponsors, three sponsors in Morgan County, MTTV. They're helping us with promotions and every way they can to get the word out. Bank of the Mountains has been nice to donate the last two years, and then um, Standard for Builders donating to it. We need your help. When you watch this and you say, man, I'm not a hunter, I'm not a fisherman, but I have 50, 25, 60, $100, whatever, to help. You can either go online, get their address, send them a check. Can they, is that possible? That, that's right. We, uh, we've got a donate button on our website. Donate credit card probably. Credit, credit card works, easier. PayPal. And, and so. every dime helps. And the money we get to go back in our pantries, even though we might only can get committed 10, 12 deer in East Kentucky, they they can bring the deer to us as they get it, and so um, we can help these pantries out. But but we need help. I right. mean, you never have enough money. That, that's true. That will be, first, if you can donate a deer, that's great. If you can't, donate money. But another thing that was actually started was suggested by one of our processors in uh, J Town, Kentucky. Uh, we're now accepting canned goods for hunters for the hungry. So we've got boxes set up at special processors. I don't know if Appalachian Meats would like to, but I could get them a box, drop off some canned goods, and then when they come to, the pantries come to pick up the deer meat, they can pick up canned goods as well. I mean, so, that's, you can't beat that. No. And like Roger said, one in five kids in the state of Kentucky goes hungry. You know, uh, it, it shouldn't be that way. Uh, I mean, it just shouldn't. We got good resources we got good people and we can fight that and through this is one good way to fight it like i said it don't matter if you're a um, hunter or not we're all good people we should be good people be That's willing right. to stand up and we can donate we can help fight this hungry there are tons of food banks in east kentucky um, we're fortunate enough going to be able to work with a couple of them one is cross pantry and forgive me for forgetting what Nikki Nims is in Wolf County. Um, we'll get that to you and we'll pop it up. But I mean, they feed thousands, and literally they feed thousands of people here in two or three counties a year, just in, in our area. But this is like this all over the state of Kentucky. And your donations, your money, your help, whether it's through deer finances or whatever, um, I'm asking you guys for my show at Appalachia Fusion and cook there and what we do here in East Kentucky. I'm asking for your all's help and support for Kentucky Hunters for the Hungry. If it's a dollar, if it's twenty dollars, if it's one of your deer tags, it doesn't matter. Everything be appreciated. Roger and them appreciate it. Like um, he was saying, them guys are volunteers and I know for a fact they'll load up a trailer, hook their truck to it, use their gas. I know some of them hook to a trailer, load it down, and come to Harlan or come to Morgan County, come to wherever, and bring and support these pantries and help feed the people of Kentucky. And we, and we appreciate that. that. And I'd, I'd be remiss without uh, bringing up the Appalachian Outdoorsman yes. Society. They have donated as well, and uh, Jimmy Cantrell and uh, his group has also uh, introduced us to a few pantries that, uh, that he, he thinks need, might benefit from our service and we're going to be doing that this year too. And I think they probably so, introduced you to Nikki, didn't they? Uh, they did. Yeah. They did. Jim, and um, uh, Jim's Mono, a great uh, guy. Mono Bargo. Yeah. I, I can't remember what pantry she's with, but uh, 
The so. um, yeah, Jimmy's a great asset here in Morgan County, and with AOA, they they've done so much to help sportsmen's kids, and they're on board. And let's let's get more of you guys on board. Let's um, let's ramp this thing up. The pantries are set up; they're ready. I personally go to Appalachian Meats when they get deer processed, bring them to the pantries, um, point of contact, and. Um, I mean, we're ready. We're ready to get this thing it's hit the ground running this year. Uh, and, um, you know, especially with everything going on, you can be outdoors away from people, be safe, and spend it with your kids, harvest, have a good time, help a family in need, and, and join together throughout this great state that we live in and support a great cause. Any closing remarks, Roger? Oh, no, I just appreciate everything you're doing up here, Larry. and. Uh this is an exciting time to be able to help our friends in Eastern Kentucky. We appreciate you guys very much. Um, go online, Google, type in Kentucky Hunters for the Hungry, pick up a pamphlet, take your smartphone, scan it, it'll take you straight to there, use the resources. And um, we're getting ready to actually go and do a small filming segment of a recipe that Roger likes and uses. It's actually made out of summer sausage, and that summer sausage is made out of ground deer burger. So there, there's a lot of options that you can do with them, with what they have to offer. We appreciate you all. Thanks for tuning in to Appalachia Fusion. We're on the ground running to promote Hunters for the Hungry, help these food banks to get people fed. Thanks, God bless, and you all have a good, good evening. Hey out there, this is Larry, Appalachia Fusion. For those who don't know me, Roger LaPointe, the president of Hunters for the Hungry, here today, and we have did an episode explaining what Hunters for the Hungry is. Now we're in the kitchen doing one of Roger's favorite appetizers, which is a summer sauce, deer summer sausage caprice. And I'm excited when he told me this, because one of my favorite things to eat is a caprice salad. And you combine that with summer sausage, what can't be? You gotta love it, and the, you know it's it's easy. And when uh, the good thing about it is, when fresh tomatoes come in, this is my go-to after a hot day, or on the farm, or and uh, what also not only as an appetizer, but it lends itself to a sandwich as well yeah, on, right. on sapata bread. Yes. So it's uh, it's. Easy, simple, and uh, I take it to a lot of sportsmen's functions, and it's always been a hit. I guarantee so. it. So my pastor in Florida used to say, make a tadpole slap a whale in the mouth. There you go. And uh, we can't give the name, but we do have fresh mozzarella cheese. Yes, well, uh, I'm blessed to have a, uh, you got to love country neighbor. She keeps me supplied with uh, uh, fresh mozzarella cheese, homemade breads, jams, jellies, and got a, a lover to death, fresh uh, eggs and the other thing too is uh, we actually my family has a, a dairy farm in Mount Washington and uh, they raise Jersey cows and that has the highest amount of butter fat and actually makes the best cheese so that's, okay. so that's we're gonna a, have to go Rogers to film a show sometime we'll there you go down there. There. so great. let's um, get us started right. what right. is. first simple just a slice your tomato I think I had to slice, make enough for the crew here too, is what I was oh, yeah. told. Oh yeah, they, so oops. we all eat good. There we go. So for my first, I'll take a plate of tomato. Oops. And then, what I'll do. Your deer salami. This is Larry's secret recipe from what I've been told. Well, it's, it's a recipe. It's a recipe. Place that on your fresh homegrown tomato. Smells good. Oh, yeah. I like summer sausage just come from. I usually, when I grind my deer, I'll make enough um, ground meat that I use for summer sausage where I can just unthaw it, throw it in my stuff or mix it, you know, mixer and stuff. And um, so about this time every year, you actually called when we was doing this 
And um, I'm like, well, I, I need to make summer sausage anyhow because we make a bunch up for bird hunting trips, deer hunting trips. We'll sit on the tailgate and yeah. get some cheese crackers, summer sausage. So it, it worked out great. And it, most of our deer processes, processes that we use also uh, sideline is making deer sausage oh, yeah. as well. Uh, Webbs Webb makes it for us. Well, that's where I usually get mine. Or I think Appalachian, Appalachian Meats. Meats does a fine job making summer so, sausage. Sure does. Yeah. But the key to this, to me, is fresh mozzarella. Oh, it, my. You, you, you can't buy the sliced out of the store and it make it turn out good. It's, it's got to be fresh. And you can buy it. If you, if you don't make your own, you can buy it at any uh, specialty cheese I've, shop. I've been excited since you said you was bringing fresh mozzarella. <laughs> oh, look how pretty it looks. Oh. And I, I don't go stingy on the cheese. I'm a cheese fanatic. Oh yeah, I don't, I think, so, uh, I don't think you're hurting no one's feelings. So just that looks good. Lay that on top. Let's get a little better slice on that other one. And then fresh basil. You just take it and uh, basically Cut it into small pieces and bruise it a little bit to get the aroma out of it. it smells good. I always have love to smell basil. So, and add a few basil leaves to each one. Make sure I have a good presentation for the chef here. And then we're we're pretty rough around the edges here. And just drizzle it with uh, a little balsamic vinaigrette, and uh, and that's it. And like I said, you can use it for an appetizer, or uh, if I have any left over, I'll put it on a little bit of a sabata bread and a roll. And it makes it it makes a great sandwich. What? You made you made enough for me. I don't know what rest I'm gonna eat. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Um, Roger, we're going to dive into this here in a minute and eat it. Um, like I said, y'all watch this show today. Um, first part of it's going to be us talking about hunters for the hungry. Then we're in here in the kitchen with Roger showing what can be done with some ground venison, local processor, you make it homemade, whatever. Tune in. Um, we'll have information at the end of the show about hunters for the hungry where you can contact them I could get said again we can use your help go online they have a place there where you can um, donate by credit card or whatever if you're a corporate want to be a corporate sponsor get up with me um, via Facebook through here somewhere um, we'll get a check to Roger or you can mail it straight to Roger hunters for the hungry all the address and everything will be on there it's on our website yeah so you don't even have to send it to me just write a check and send it to them Roger, make sure um, we get well represented and taken care of in East Kentucky. And um, we appreciate you guys. Thanks for tuning in to a special episode in my heart with Appalachia Fusion. We appreciate you guys again. We'll have this recipe, Roger's, we'll call it Roger's Famous Summer Sausage <laughs> Deer Capri, or Deer Summer Sausage Caprice. And um, try it out this winter when you get your summer sausage back from your deer harvest and um, enjoy we appreciate you guys thank you for tuning in remember click on mttv go to the mtv tv website page click on the food part of it I have recipes and you can see past shows that's uploaded to youtube and also see the recipes that's up and coming we appreciate you thank you and y'all have a good evening